Hi everyone, Solomon's Tales continuing and lots of airplanes. I'm not bothered with these and after Christmas I'll be moving so no more planes. <laughs> Quick mention, thailanddesk.com, thanks so much for everyone who's joined in with a new project. If you haven't seen it yet, pop and have a look. So, he's there, breakfast with Nin, chatting away. A couple of hours later, Frozen's going to turn up. So, Ning says that she's going to just wander back, probably have another sleep, and she'll catch up with him later in the afternoon. And he says, okay, fine. So they finish breakfast, off she goes. And he heads back to his room. He's got food, he's beginning to wake up. Gets back, up a couple of sets of stairs, walking along the corridor. First door still open, there's girls in there. There's sort of mulling at the beginning to move about but it's coming up for lunch time so they've been working all night they'll probably wake up have food go back to sleep for a few more hours hmm. gets up to his room doors open still two girls fast asleep on the bed anyway he comes in and thinks oh so he nudges the girls and they sort of stir a bit and he's like hmm. looks at the food it's all empty food dishes so he starts clearing it all up there's about four or five dishes. Clearing it all up. He hasn't got any bin. Well, there's a, a plastic bin on in the room, but no bin bags or anything. You think, oh, great. Yeah. Pops down to the shop, gets some cigarettes. And a couple of equivalent to Red Bulls. So this is a Lippo he was drinking. It's quite a strong little drink. It's only about 10 baht. It just gives you an energy kick. He grabs some bin liners, some plastic bags, back up, and the girls are sort of stirring. He chucks all this food and stuff of theirs in the bag, sticks it out on the balcony. That's a clue for them to empty their room and put it in the bin. And he comes in, he starts uh, flicking through his clothes, and he thinks, oh, my clothes, I've hardly got any, and oh, I need some some clothes. Uh, also when you're playing pool and the snooker and things it's always best to have a short sleeve. You, you want to keep your queuing arm uh, free and you think I need some I need some shirts. Could do with a couple of pairs of shorts. Now he likes the like the army shorts where they've got all the extra pockets um, so keep all his bits in. And he'd noticed further down second road towards Walking Street End there was Quite a few shops there that sell football shirts you know those ones but they had loads of polo shirts and things like this um cheap and it's known to the to the sort of expats and the people who are buying shirts to take home that this was a good place they thought i'm going to go down there and get some shorts and shirts um and i can throw this stuff away it's looking a bit tatty there's no need to build up huge wardrobe clothes are so cheap you can even fly to Thailand with nothing in your bag, kit your wardrobe out for a couple of thousand baht. So you don't need to take loads with you. Right, okay. So again, he just leaves the girls, jumps on the bike, zips. He has to go all the way down to Beach Road. It's a nice ride. It's a one-way system, round the square, Beach Road, up and along Second Road to Dolphin Roundabout and back round. So he zips down Beach Road, goes right to the end actually, and comes up, comes back. It's not far up on his right is the shop. In he goes, yeah, buys four or five polo shirts, a couple of vests type for the heat, and they've got those cami shorts, 300 baht. He buys two pairs um, and also picks up like a canvas belt. Fantastic. Also, notice some uh, like deck shoes, which are. You know, shoes, flip flops, whatever you're wearing, it does get hot. And he spots some nice deck shoes, tries them, 250 bikes, right? So he's just bought a new wardrobe. <laughs> Back on a bike, up to the room, and as he pulls up, Frozen's there, um, just pulled in in front of him uh, on her little bike. So he's like, Hi, how are you? Great, cuddle, kiss, you know. And he says, girls, room, 
and it tries to explain, you know. They just, they're all sleeping in the rooms and not with me. And she laughs and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they both go up in into his room and she's like, you know, and sees these girls there and she starts shouting at them. <laughs> wake up, get out. <laughs> and these girls wake up like, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> and Frozen knows one of them. It's a small world. They all know each other. That's good and bad. That's like, yeah, there's stories there. So watch out, guys. If you're going to meet a partner, there's a fair chance that if it doesn't work out and you find another partner, they'll all know each other. <laughs> anyway, Frozen, get up. Instructs them. So they both go in the shower together. It's like, hmm. Could be a guy's heaven dream there. Yeah, I know. So, Solomon throws his new clothes down, gets his old ones, goes out to that bag and throws them in that bin bag. Girls come out of the shower and they're back in their pyjamas again and they just like giggle and wave them out the door. And he's like, oi, take that bag. And they sort of mm, drag the bag along and then they go in the room next door. Don't forget there's rooms down below as well. Must be another four rooms down there. <laughs> oh, giggles everywhere. <laughs> somebody who has the nickname maybe cheap Charlie who doesn't like spending money if you hooked up in one of those rooms got friendly with all the girls you could probably have quite a lot of fun yeah anyway so he got his new clothes he says I'm just gonna have a shower and he heads in the shower and in his back of his mind he's thinking oh is frozen gonna walk through the door and come in the shower I hope not because we're not we can't go there she's got a boyfriend as well luckily she didn't anyway comes out chucks on his new clothes looking quite smart and they start talking about this contest later um, and frozen says there's not too many people about the last week it seems to be quiet time of year um, but hopes that it'll be good and then she starts talking about another uh, killer pool match up um, Soy Bacow who was up there somewhere the next night as well and someone was like okay so we're going to end up doing this going around all these pool matches and see if we can raise some money now he kept kicking back some money to Frozen, don't forget, so she's keen to push you into all these contests. And the more you play, the better you get. And it's a totally different game killer pool to normal pool. So for those who don't quite understand this, um, zip forward if you don't want to listen, but killer pool, standard pool table in Patea was just like the little six foot table. Some had the bigger seven foot, eight foot tables. But you had all the balls in a triangle set up, just like a snooker match and a cue ball, a black ball in there. And killer pool, you, you break off and you've got some lives each. And you can pot any ball. Most of the bars it was pot any ball, except the black. If you pot the black, you lose the game. If you pot the white cue ball, you lose a life. You lose two lives, it used to be. But the object is you have one shot, you pot a ball, and it goes past the cue on and everyone has a go. If you miss, you don't get a pot, you lose a life. Maybe it was three lives or four lives you started with. Usually there's a Thai girl with a blackboard, everyone's name on, crossing off your lives. And the best, the secret that Solomon got was you, you pot a ball, but you try and put the cue ball somewhere that the next person can't pot. That way, knocking one of their lives off. But if the person after that is really good, what you do is you pot a ball, leave an easy one, for the next person but knowing the natural angle is going to leave the next person in trouble hopefully knocking that good player out and it goes on once all the balls are pot potted they bring the all the balls back up and start again until your lives lost and then eventually the players whittle down to the last two that give you new lives into final and you just play against each other usually they split the money as well winner would get 90 percent 80 percent second place would get 10 or 20 percent Sometimes the bar would take a little bit of a 
kickback as well from the winnings to cover costs and a bit of profit for them. Most of the time it was on American pool tables, but occasionally it would be on a cheap six foot snooker table with smaller balls. That was hard, anyone. Very hard to win on those tables. So Solomon tried to keep off those ones. It, it was still good, but those tables are wooden bases and the ball roll off and it's hard. So you could quite easily lose on those. Anyway, back to it. So Frozen's there, Solomon. They've got hours to kill. Um, it's lunchtime, of course Frozen's hungry and she says let's go somewhere get some food uh, on the bikes and uh, someone's like mm, okay Frozen says let's go up Naklua which is the road up on the other side of Dolphin Roundabout so you come along second road parallel to the beach but then you're sort of heading out of it there she says, we'll, we'll go up there and then cut down to the beach there's some five stars and there's some cafes and Thai food on the on the beach and get down there close to the, the beach okay so they jump on the bikes and head off and they find down between two five stars um, near the temple of oh, I forgot the name of it temple of wisdom oh anyway yeah <laughs> but just past that there's a couple of five stars and there was a road down between and there's a couple of little beach cafes, restaurants, sort of hitting the tourists that as their target, but locals and things used to use them as well and the price would be lower. So they went down there and sat on the beach, had some food, lovely. They just chilled for a few hours and relaxed, kicked back life, talking about everything. Frozen was talking about her boyfriend um, and uh, how she might be going up to Bangkok for a, a week, but that was about a month's time. Ah, oh, cool, no problem. Anyway, hours passed. Eventually, frozen heads off to get ready for the evening and sleep and change. Solomon goes back to his room, um, and the door was closed. <laughs> he gets back. Yeah, the girls are still asleep when he gets back in the room next door and. They're not, they're just asleep. Anyway, dives in, has a kit for an hour, up, shower, change, about seven in the evening. The pool contest is about eight. Frozen turns up, pretty much on the time that uh, Solomon wakes up, and Frozen rings Ning. <laughs> they're becoming good friends. Anyway, Solomon's up and changed, out the door, head down to, on foot, they don't take the bikes, so they walk down to the beach, front, along, and Ning, out she comes and meets them, and the three of them, so there's Solomon, two beautiful women on his arm, walking down beach road, on the beach side of the main road, beach road, on the pavement, walking down towards Soy 8, what a picture that was, wish I had that picture, I so wish I had that picture. Anyway, down they go. It's quite a long walk to get down to Soy 8, you know, five minutes or so. And they go into the bar. Now this area is called Centre Point. There's about five or six bars in there. One side of it's on Soy 8, and you can get to Beach Road at the front part. So it's like an L shape with bars one side and the bigger bar on the, on the right, which is Jim's bar. We've called him Jim. And they come in, there's quite a few people around. Um, and they head in and Jim comes over to Solomon straight away and says hi and they're becoming friends now. He says hi to Frozen and uh, Ning. And Jim says to uh, Solomon, not that many in tonight. Um, and we're gonna take a couple of thousand baht off the top of the bar. Um, and then we'll do a first in place, second split, when we know how many people have enrolled. And he says, good luck, hope you win. Anyway. They get some drinks. They call the roll call as they do and everyone starts signing up. It takes them about 20 minutes, half hour. And it's all set. 24 players. And 2,000 bats going to go to the bar. 18,000 bats to the winner. 4,000 to the second place. Um, there's two of the girls. Two tables. Two of the girls 
working on the blackboards with names and stuff. And off it goes. So Solomon gets in. It doesn't take long to get round to have you go again. Just a few minutes. It all goes fine. Solomon's doing fine. The competition, there's nobody there. There's no sharks there. But there's one guy who's quite a big guy. Big built guy. Who's quite good. Solomon's already clocked him. He's on the other tables. But he's watched him. He's seeing him. You can just tell by... When you get to a certain level, you can see somebody's cue action and you can see who's good and who's not straight away. And then there's a, somebody could just get lucky and win this contest easily. Just complete luck. So you've got to look for those as well. Yeah, they play on. Hour later, it's coming down to the last sort of eight. They've moved on to one table. Solomon's still there, doing fine, but now he's got that big guy. And the running order can make a difference of luck as well. If you get a great player in front of you, you're in trouble. Luckily for Solomon, goes fine. Gets to the end, the last two players, and Solomon's there. So he's guaranteed 4,000 baht. The other player, yeah, it's that big guy. So they set the table up, they put him on the main table. And the girls and Jim comes across and says, you know, congratulations. And everyone's like, yeah, you know, well, okay. They've all paid a thousand baht each to play this. It's a lot of miserable people, but they're still drinking. Anyway, this big guy chirps up. Winner takes all. He's had a few drinks. He's a little bit merry. And he's sort of saying to Jim and to Solomon, winner takes all. And Jim looks at Solomon and Solomon says, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. The guy wants basically to take all the winnings that the... the 22,000 baht and not have a 4,000 second. Simon says no, nah, because he knows the 4,000 baht has covered his evening. So, no, nope, not doing it. Oh, that's terrible. We're way over time. I'm going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry. That's a cliffhanger. I'll see you on the next one.